Scott Mendelson, you're at it again. Of course you're at it again. And and so so whose side are you on? I thought you hated the fans, but now you're saying it's a lame duck. Really? I th- I thought you hated pretty much you're blaming us for for getting a new Ghostbusters, which, you know, good. You you attack the fans of Star Wars immediately the day after Ghostbusters is announced, like the the third movie anyway. And now you're saying it's a lame duck. Okay, well, well, I agree. It is kind of a lame duck at this point. Let's see what he has to say. We did not get a title for the next Star Wars movie during yesterday's Disney shareholders call. There were rumblings that such a thing might happen, but the big news was that Bob Iger reassured folks that Walt Disney would still make R-rated movies under the Fox banner or otherwise. Once it took over the studio behind Deadpool, Alien, and Predator. So, yeah, we got some good news, at least, you know? Hopefully, they're not going to fuck it up too bad. We don't know, though. We don't know. That shouldn't have been a question. A big reason the Mouse House bought Fox was to get a foothold in the kind of grown-up fare that Fox box office struggles in the Netflix and chill era notwithstanding has specialized over the last several years. Okay, can you proofread this? Because this is, like, a weird mouthful Ah, it's just a weird mouthful. You, you, you got to kind of think about how we're going to read this out loud because you know we read these out loud. I know he knows we read these out loud. I'm guessing J.J. Abrams and friends noticed the success of Marvel baiting the internet with an unrevealed Avengers 4 title for over four years. That project was announced in October 2014 with the first teaser debuting in early December 2018. Thus, I'd expect episode 9 to get a title right along with its first teaser during this year's Star Wars celebration in mid-April. Kind of what we've been saying. Ah, we didn't get a title for Star Wars 9 because we didn't need one. Because Disney can get the same publicity from free speculative posts. No, no shit. No shit. People are so busy running with the pinball title. And, like, I, I even said, yeah, it's a pinball table. They're not going to use it. Moreover, Disney's big Christmas release is both incredibly important and utterly irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Well, yeah, because it doesn't matter when you release it. We're not going to go see it. You know, I I know there's so many people who are just going to go and see, like, something else, anything else. They'll buy a ticket for something else and sneak over like a lot of people did with Solo, from what I'm hearing. That's because no matter how it performs in December, Walt Disney will face the same challenge. How does it make general audiences care about Star Wars movies that aren't explicitly connected to those first three Star Wars movies? And aren't explicitly tied into the saga of the Skywalker family. I know. Well, because they keep telling us, well, it's the Skywalker saga. It's the Skywalker saga. So who the crap is Rey? She's nobody. Well, fuck her then. Why do I care about your movie? This is why The Last Jedi was such a a huge fuck you to the fans. Because, yeah, we were promised the Skywalker saga and we get that garbage. Rogue One and the George Lucas prequels were, well, prequels to the first three Star Wars movies. And the last three Disney episodes are 30 years later. Sequels to The Return of the Jedi, complete with the return of Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. And I'm starting to talk like Alex Kurtzman. I'm saying and all the time. After this, presuming Disney really does give Ryan Johnson his own disconnected trilogy and let the Game of Thrones guys make their own Star Wars movies, to say nothing of Jon Favreau's The Mandalorian episodic series on Disney+, Plus, Star Wars will face a unique challenge that will general moviegoers... What will general moviegoers think about Star Wars movies that are mostly disconnected to the world? Well, they don't care. They don't care. It's, it's the same thing with the toy line. Nobody cares. You don't buy toys with, like, Rose Tico. This is why they're selling a bouquet of 20 Rose Ticos for, what, $20 or something. Or a dozen Rose Ticos for 20 bucks with roses on Entertainment Earth. Because no one cares about these new characters. They're shit. They don't matter. They don't do anything important or interesting. And especially if you're uh, taking them away from the Skywalker saga, why do we care? Because we don't. Because we don't. I don't care about these new characters. Do you? Do you care about Rey and Finn and Poe and all the other knuckleheads that are on this series? To what extent did folks flock to The Force Awakens specifically? Because it promised the return. Yeah, it did. It did. That's why. Since episode 9 will apparently close the book on the Skywalker solo story that began in 1977, Disney must go back to the proverbial drawing board no matter how well this ninth Star Wars episode performs. Yeah, you know, or they could tie in some of the some of the expanded universe stuff. Give Ahsoka a movie. Give Thrawn the, the, the movie franchise. Give something to EU fans, to the expanded universe fans. Oh, wait, you can't do that because you declared it all non-canon. Yeah, maybe maybe Disney screwed the pooch on this one, huh? Maybe, maybe this is some damage control by saying, oh, um, 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 uh, what, what do they care about? Oh, Deadpool. Deadpool's still going to be R-rated. Deadpool's still going to be R-rated. 
it, it seems like a bunch of damage control and crowd control to me. So stupid that they have to do that. You know, if they just made good movies and asked the fans what they kind of wanted. Oh, we want to see Mark Hamill do this. We want to see Luke and Leia and... Yeah, we're older. So are they. We we uh, we get older. We you know we, we can't just look at young heroes forever, <laughs> because young people kind of are irrelevant to a certain age point. Like I don't care what people are doing over on TikTok. I don't. It's irrelevant to me. I I care about more adult issues because I'm more of that age group. I'm I'm I grew up with the original trilogy. I've been alive for what two or two of them in the original theater. I didn't, I didn't get to see, I think I got to see Return of the Jedi in the theater, but no, I've been alive for two of these movies. I don't care about what teenagers do. I don't care about the struggles in the lives of teenagers. I don't care about all this stuff. I want to, I want to see some real grown up stuff. I want to see some family relationship drama, not even drama. I want to, I want to see how these characters interact. And, and now that they're older, this is why a movie like train spotting Two actually uh, hit the right notes for me. Cause I'm like, okay, I can kind of relate to this. He goes home after 20 years, kind of relate. That's kind of an interesting plot line and not, you know, Oh, and now there's this new person. Screw you old people. We're going to kill off all the old people. I don't, I don't care about this little, I don't care about this little girl. I don't. We know that in 2019 and beyond, merely offering a relatively high quality mega budget sci-fi fantasy actioneer isn't enough to get people in the theater. No shit. So without the explicit ties to the Darth Vader saga, without explicit ties to defending the original trilogy characters, or to de the defining original trilogy characters, will folks consider Star Wars movies to be worth trekking out into the theater to see? We don't know. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to care. I really don't. Maybe it will eventually become a Pixar or MCU-like brand where the Lucasfilm franchise is big and trusted enough where people are excited just because it's a Star Wars movie. Or maybe after the balance is returned to the Force... No, I don't care about returning balance to the Force. Audiences will look at a new Star Wars movie as little different from the next Alita Battle Angel or Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> oh, Jupiter Ascending! You mean mega box office flop Jupiter Ascending? Alita Battle Angel probably won't do too well either at this point. It's not getting the best reviews from what I'm seeing. I don't know. I might, I might end up covering that on the channel. We'll see. We don't know what the next Star Wars movies will be after Episode Nine, either because Lucasfilm is being tight-lipped, or as tight-lipped as Marvel is about their <laughs> respective post-Endgame plans, or because they're taking time to figure out what the next phase of Star Wars should look like. Well, I can tell you this. I think that they have no idea what they're doing. They're in damage control right now. They're trying to figure out who they need to fire. I think they probably have fired Kiri Hart, who is like Kathleen Kennedy's, um, Kathleen Kennedy Jr., as, as far as bad for the franchise in that Lucas story film or story group crap that oh lord I, I think that's I think that's what happened I really think that's what happened and I think they don't know what the crap they're doing that's why they said oh we're putting everything on hold so I think they really need to reassess and figure out where they're going and I think that episode nine when we boycott episode nine I think that's going to give them a huge wake-up call about about it also of note, Fox, the Fox purchase gives them some time, especially if James Cameron's Avatar 2 opens as planned in December 18, 2020. If the next batch of Avatar sequels breaks out, then Disney have, has the option of essentially alternating Star Wars and Avatar every Christmas. That will allow them to maybe make just one Star Wars movie every two years, which will allow for a brand to maintain certain event status. Every two years is too, too much, too. Like, Star Wars was an event because it was like a decade since the last one for Force Awakens. You, you got to take a decade off. You really got to skip this generation. Um, we, we have to skip this generation of outrage culture people. We, we got to we gotta skip this generation of respect women and only we hate men. We, we need to get rid of this regeneration, this... Uh, this 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 outrage culture generation we just need to skip them because guess what always happens in society people always rebel against the generation before them it's nothing new it's it's a tradition as old as time you know you had conservative people who were uptight and then hippies happened and then it, it just keeps going in cycles and and yeah get just skip this generation i think we'll be fine 
<sighs> in a more conventional world, we would have gotten a new Star Wars, or we wouldn't have gotten a new Star Wars for two or three years anyway. The original six movies opened th- three-year schedules, uh, 1977, 1980, and 83. Then 99, 2002, 2005. That's what they should have done, given them some time to simmer, given us some time to, to watch them. I guess we can't in today's instant gratification society. <laughs> Their old news the day they're out of the, like the day after they open. Opening weekends all that really matters in today's society. So, but now three years is, but now three years is enough time for Sony to call it quits on the Amazing Spider-Man franchise and be back in theaters with Spider-Man: Homecoming. I have no idea how audiences will react to Star Wars movies that are relative originals, that which just happen to play take place in the Star Wars universe. Ah, uh, they won't. It will work best on video game and book format where the real and and I don't I don't mean this in a derogatory fashion at all we're the real actual star wars nerds and you know the people who are passionate about it the people who who listen to podcasts talking about the expanded universe those people might see these movies your average casual star wars fan like myself who who are passionate about the main films and and stick with the main film franchise stuff where we probably won't care we, we might give it a shot but they're not related to star wars they just happen to be in the universe this is why i skipped the clone wars even though it actually takes place in the time of the prequels i skipped that because i'm like eh, i don't really care about the prequels that much eh. and, and and you got a lot of us who are kind of that point a lot of like especially for somebody like me i am definitely a little bit more in the star trek camp than star wars i love them both don't get me wrong i do love them both i know more about star trek though I would probably skip it. And and yeah, I think there's a lot of us who would probably skip this. But for now, all eyes are on Star Wars Episode 9, where J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy and friends attempt to tie up the Ray Kylo fucking who cares saga in a way that theoretically pleases the nostalgic fans and the destruction nostalgia folks. Or the discretion destruction are better than nostalgia folks. I imagine whatever they do is going to upset or displease 50% of the fans anyway, so I hope they just do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, that would be great if they just do something whatever the hell they want, regardless of what the fans say. Oh, wait, they did that. That's how we got Last Jedi, huh? Whether Episode Nine sinks or soars, Star Wars will face the same fundamental challenge of thriving outside of its core narrative and sans its marquee characters. If you like what you're reading, follow Scotty Boy Mendelssohn and his shit-eating grin on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Or work here. Oh, I should work here. I should work there. I should work there because I can actually do investigative reporting. And I can give my opinions, too. <sighs> so what, is, what does this say? This basically says Star Wars is fucked. Um, I, I, think it, I think it kind of is. I think it kind of is a lame duck. What do you guys think? Do you think it's just... I, I know I'm so sick. I'm, I'm sick to death of what they're doing with Star Wars. I very much so love watching the behind the scenes drama and the, and the journalists try and find anything they can to get clicks and, and any, any, even the hate clicks. Cause that's what they're doing. Nobody cares about this. So they have to draw up drama and hate clicks on their articles. Wait, what do you guys think? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. I am Mecha Random 42. You can send Vid, uh, where is it? You can send presents and unboxing stuff to Mechoran42, P.O. Box 1566, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. For future unboxing videos, I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye!